Good morning, good morning, church. Good morning, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, get something up on here I want to look at. We're in Jude, the little book of Jude. It's just Jude, one little chapter. Just before the book of Revelation at the end of the Bible. Um, our, our reading in the, in the New Testament today is in Matthew 24, the last half of it, if you're reading through the Bible with a side Bible reading charts on the back table and read it. But I'm kind of kicking off from there. Uh, we'll just start. I'll make mention of my text out today. I'll, I'll read it to you. The, the text out today uh, is from Matthew uh, 24, and it's verses 35, 39, 42, and 44. It starts out, it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The Bible. Uh, the Bible is so important. The Bible says of itself, Train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they'll not depart from it. And uh, I'm glad that Marquis and Miranda are, are training their precious girls in the Bible and that they teach them the Bible and they, they, they read the Bible together. And the girls are starting to read the Bible too. And, and we should all, I, I was taught the Bible when I was little. Uh, I should have got saved when I was young. I didn't. I didn't get saved until I was 29 years old. But but that was my fault. Not uh, That wasn't God's fault. That was my fault. But it says... Um, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And know not, uh, and this was uh, during Noah and the flood, it says, And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It means the Lord's going to come quickly. It's called the eminent. He, he could come today during the church service. He could have come uh, last week or last year. He could have come, you know, Paul, the Apostle Paul, a couple thousand years ago, he was expecting Jesus to come back. And so I expect him today. Uh, we know not know when the Lord cometh. So then it says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. So there's a lot of preachers that say, Oh, this happened, that's happened, this happened, happened, Middle East, this and that, and... I know the Lord's going to come any day. They don't know that because Paul expected them. There's, there, there's no prophetic verses that have had to be fulfilled since Paul lived on this earth that Jesus would come back. We believe in the rapture, the imminent return of Christ. But it says, uh, Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as when you think not the Son of Man cometh. And that's Matthew 24, 35, 39, 42, and 44. And then my little comment was, the Lord Jesus Christ could return at any time. Repent. Be ready. Lord, save me, a wicked sinner. That's what all of us have to say in our life, you know. I, I, I feel sorry for people that think they're better than someone else. There's nobody, there's no, nobody better than anybody else. Uh, God is for everybody, rich and poor. God is no respecter of persons. Don't ever, don't ever forget that. He doesn't care where you were born. He doesn't care what the color of your skin is. He doesn't care anything about you other than uh, that we're all in the same boat. We have wicked hearts. We're sinners, and we need to repent and be saved. And, and we need to teach our children that when they're little even. And, and people say, oh, don't, uh, uh, don't, you know, they tell me, they say, oh, pastor, uh, you shouldn't tell uh, children about hell. Well, I tell them about the cars speeding down the street, not to go in the street, don't I, huh? 
one of the girls, uh, not one of the, one of the, I didn't know the girl, but uh, uh, you know the guy that uh, had the COVID and he's out there at First Step and he's cooking out at First Step now, so it's good. Uh, his name is uh, Mark. He texted me this morning, he said, I can't come, I gotta cook. But, uh, but the girl that he knew out there, uh, she was in her 20s, I believe, and, and, and she ran out in the street trying to get across the street to catch a bus and, and out there on International Speedway, out there by the jail, cars are going 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour. Well, she thought she could get across, and she didn't. And, and, and a car hit her at high speed, killed her instantly. And so you, you, you don't know. But, but, but we tell, we tell uh, uh, Marquis and Miranda, they tell their precious little girls, uh, uh, don't go on the street. Be careful. Be careful. Don't tell you that? Yeah. They tell you that and sometimes, sometimes the children don't do what they tell you. I remember who, which, which one hurt her leg? Which one broke her leg? She did, the little one. Marquis, Mama told her, "You play there, but don't be careful. Be careful." <laughs> and so they're not careful. Boom! Something falls on her leg, break her leg. <laughs> but we, 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 we warn our children. We warn people. How much more should we warn them about hell than we warn them about cars on the road and right. something heavy that can fall on their leg and break it? Amen. Yeah. Amen. yeah. yeah. So that's, that's that's what we do. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that that's the reading. So let's go to the little book of Jude, back of the Bible, just before Revelation. It says Jude, by the way, Jude was the half-brother of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, uh, Jesus didn't have any whole brothers because he was conceived of God, of the Holy Spirit. He had a mother, his mother was Mary, so they, they had the Jude and Jesus had the same mother, but Joseph was Jude's father and God uh, was Jesus' father. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, who was another brother of Jesus, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus and called. Sanctified means set apart. Uh, you know what we're set apart from when we believe in Jesus? We're set apart for heaven. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Set apart for heaven. Right. Oh, my. I'm so glad I'm set apart for heaven. It says, set, uh, uh, sanctified by God the Father and preserved what it means to be preserved it says once you're sanctified and once uh these precious uh, uh little girls uh victoria tina tell it to me valentina and, Rosario. Valentina. and the other rosario. Rosie. rosario valentina and rosario yep. yeah. okay now, what did I want to tell about them? <laughs> See, when you get old, you got trouble, man. If you don't get it out quick, you're in trouble. Some people write, you know, some preachers write everything down and read it. I've never done it in my life. Never have. I just, that ain't me. That's some preachers, and there's good preachers that do that. I'm not against them, but that ain't me. Probably be better as I'm getting old, and I can't remember two seconds before. But um, uh, I'll read the verse. It'll tell me that. Preserved. Oh, yeah, this is what I'm saying. Your precious little ones, they're in the family. They're in your family. Always be in your family. They'll always be your little girls. I got my, my, my two daughters. They have their own children. I have a bunch of grandchildren, great-grandchildren. But those two little girls of mine, like, like you got, they're always my little girls and they're always in my family. Yeah, so once you're in the family, when they don't listen and break their leg, they're still in the family. <laughs> when they do what they're told, they're still, you know, they're, they're in the, no matter what. 
You see, family membership is unconditional. Well, 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 well the only condition is, is you're born into it. You have to be born into it. And so how you get in the family of God, you're born again. So let's go on. Uh, preserved. You never, you're always going to be in a family. Once you're in, you're in. You can't lose it. You can't lose your salvation. A lot of preachers teach you can. Mercy unto you and peace and love. Be multiplied. Mercy, peace, and love. Them are great words, aren't they? Mercy. I love it. Peace. I love it. Love. Ah, love. That's, that's the greatest word. You know, without love, you have nothing. Got to love. Got to love your enemies. Got to love everybody. Christians love everybody. Verse 3. Beloved. I, I like those. Th those kind of endearing uh, phrases are so nice. It's kind of like a husband and wife talking to each other. Beloved. It's nice. And, and, and we're actually the bride of Christ, you know. Uh, we that are, are saved. Beloved. When I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. Now, what it means here by common salvation, <clears throat> it means that there's only one way to be saved. The problem we have today is we have so many brands of Christianity and we have so many Jesuses and all of the Jesuses are false Jesuses other than the one real one. There's one real Jesus, and he's the only one that can save you. But there's a lot of preachers and a lot of teachers and a lot of people going after another Jesus. And the book of Galatians says, if, uh, if anyone preach you a different gospel or uh, uh, the word gospel actually means, it doesn't mean good news. Modern Bibles have told you gospel means good news. The real meaning of gospel is God's word. Don't ever forget that. The, the, the real meaning of gospel is God's word. It's not good news. It is good news, but the word gospel is actually God's word. That's what gospel means. And, of course, these modern translators that have changed the Bible, they call it good news. And, by the way, for, for many years I preached and, and caught up that uh, false uh, new Bible teaching of the gospel being good news. No, the gospel is God's word. Don't ever forget that. Beloved, when I call you to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. You see, me as a pastor of this church talking to my congregation and preaching to people, I must teach you and I must earnestly contend for the faith that, that I keep this uh, uh, which was once delivered. I mean, the true saving gospel, that you and I and everybody comes the same way as a repentant, humble sinner. That, that's what, what do you think, uh, high, uh, what do you think rich and high and powerful people, what do you think keeps Donald Trump from being saved? Pride, arrogance, that's what keeps him from being saved. He's a proud, boastful, arrogant person. And uh, yeah, he's against abortion. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Uh, he might just say he's against abortion because he knew he'd get all the Christians vote. I don't know. I have no idea. That could be. It could be. It's politics. That's, you know, they politics way at how I want to get the vote. I don't know. I hope he's against abortion. The, the Republican Party has the strongest plank in the Republican Party ever against abortion. I'm glad for that. But I don't know if they mean it. Or not. I don't know. Maybe they're just trying to keep the Christians. I don't know. I, I'm, just, I'm just telling you the, the way I see it. But the common salvation, we have to contend for that. The true faith, the true gospel, the true salvation. Verse 4, for there are certain men and women crept in unawares, ah, they're sneaky, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men and women, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now, there's a Bible verse. In fact, I texted it out. What I read you wasn't what I really texted out today. I texted something different out. You didn't got it, you know. I, I had a couple of different ones I was planning on doing. But, but the one I did, I said that, that you have to be very careful um, because the truth of the matter is Satan himself, the devil, there's a devil. There's a devil, yeah. He's nasty. He's mean. He's the... He's the father of lies. He, he wants to take you to hell. He's the great deceiver. The devil, Satan himself, shall transform himself into an angel of light. That means he comes like God's preacher. And then it says, <laughs> then it's, it's not a big deal then. Think it not a big deal or, or uncommon that his ministers, Satan's, are transformed into an angel of light. There's tons of preachers that say they're gospel preachers. Some of them even cast out de devils. I, I mean that because because you know the devil is powerful and he's a, he's a, he's a fraud. He's a faker, and, and and he's a false god, and so he looks good, and uh, a lot of people follow him, and follow his uh, evil ways, and and. Uh, you don't you don't need you don't need any kind of a preacher or so-called prophet or anything to tell you anything about what's going to happen. You you know the only thing you and I need about to, what's going to happen read your bible. Everything I need to know. All the prophecies of foretelling in the future have already been done. They're in the bible and they're for us to read. We have no prophets telling the future today. I had them come come in the back door there I remember in uh Many times, and he said, "Oh, Pastor, I just I got a prophecy for you. I, I'm gonna tell you what God told me about you." And they tell me some stupid thing, and and uh, and they, they want me to say, "Oh, oh, thank you." I said, "Ah," I said, "You know what your problem is? You probably ate too many hamburgers last night." That's what I tell them. <laughs> <laughs> They don't know. <laughs> this precious lady that died, Marlene, she was tied up with them. She had eight prophets that she listened to. They're so full of mashed potatoes, it's ridiculous. <laughs> she never talked to me much because she knew how I felt. She knew what I'd say. So she said, she tell my wife that. She said, well, read this, read this prophecy, read this prophecy. And, and uh, they were having uh, Trump win the election uh, even after it was over. You know, they were, they're crazy. It just, it wasn't going to happen and didn't happen. You know, I mean, they're, they're, but they're, you can't question them. I'm going to tell you who you can't question is God. And you can't question the Bible because if you question the Bible, you're questioning God. These idiots that say they're prophets and you, they follow them along and drink the Kool-Aid, they're nuts. I'm going to go follow an old Jim Jones down the road and drink the Kool-Aid, huh? Remember who Jim Jones was in his cult? Killed all his followers drinking the Kool-Aid. Put the arsenic or whatever in the, in the Kool-Aid and, and killed them. Yeah. Come in. The Lord who were of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, Turning the grace of God, the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us denying ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that great God and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2, 11 to 13. Great scripture. But it says, they turn the grace of God in the lasciviousness. That's a bad, bad, bad word. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. They denied the true one. And they went different direction. Different Jesus. Verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance. Though you once knew this. How that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt. Remember that? When they come out of Egypt. Wonderful story. I, I love to read it to my grandchildren. And any children I can get a hold of will listen. When, when they come and. And the Red Sea was parted and all the plagues came and all of that. And the Passover were the firstborn. Boy, it's just a wonderful story. I love it. 
destroyed them that believe not. There's a bunch of people come out of uh, Egypt, Jews, that they, they didn't believe. They wouldn't believe. Verse 6, And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under the darkness the judgment of the great day. A third of the angels of, of heaven that were for God, they went with the devil. See, the devil, Lucifer, he was the head angel. And he turned against God and tried to take over, and he took the third of the angels of heaven with him. Them are the demons that are all around here now. Verse 7, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of our, our eternal fire. You know, for, for years and years and years, uh, America had uh, biblical laws on the book. They were they were called sodomite lies, coming from Sodom and and, and uh, Gomorrah about homosexuality. They were actually on the books. Now homosexuals are made to be heroes. How terrible! And and and, and they're, they're they're trying to teach that garbage to our children in the kindergarten now, the kindergarten in the public school, in many places in the very liberal states are trying to teach our children when they're very little. <coughs> oh, this terrible stuff. <coughs> we want. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed over the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation. He didn't. Michael, the big shot angel, head angel. Didn't even fight against the devil. He said, the Lord rebuke you. Let the Lord take care of stuff. You know, another portion of Scripture, the Bible says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. I don't have to fight nobody. I don't have to stick up for my good name. What ain't that good anyway? No one's is. We need salvation. I don't have to stick up for God's good name. He'll stick up for his own name. He'll take care of his own business. <laughs> he put... He could put his finger on someone like a thumb on an ant and wipe them out. Don't forget the, the Bible. God said, vengeance is mine, saying, Lord, I will pay. We're supposed to be, I bet you, last week I heard a sermon. Some one of my preacher friends sent me a link to a preacher he listened to, and a crazy preacher, he told him Christians to fight, fight. Hey, Christians ain't supposed to fight. They're supposed to be humble. They ain't supposed to fight. Huh. Telling us to face, oh, the lion of uh, lion of Judah. That comes later, not now. Not now. It's humility. He come, uh, he come low and meek, uh, riding on a little donkey. And he says, "Learn of me, because I am meek and lowly of mind." Isn't that what Jesus said? Yeah, we're supposed to be little humble folks, not tough guys. Yeah, that's what it says Bible. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally are brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them. Watch out. For they have gone the way of Cain. Remember Cain? Did, did you know who Cain and Abel were? They were the first two boys born to Adam and Eve. And you know Cain, he didn't do what God said and he brought the wrong sacrifice. And his brother Abel brought the right sacrifice. He brought a blood sacrifice picturing the blood of Jesus and Cain brought the wrong stuff, vegetables. And so Cain got mad because his sacrifice was denied and he killed his brother. And he got the mark of Cain on him. For they have gone the way of Cain. Don't go the way of Cain. Go the way of Abel. Be obedient. And ran greedily after the heir of Balaam. That's another. That was a false prophet that... That he wanted to get money for, uh, uh, you know, the king asked him to curse God. <laughs> God wouldn't let him curse him. Balaam wouldn't allow him. But he was a devil. He was a money grabbing preacher. A lot, a lot of them around today too. They ain't of God. They're they're no good. And perished in the gainsaying of Korah. Remember what Korah was? Do you, uh, let me remind you. They, they they're the ones that rebelled against Moses and rebelled against God and, and God said back away let them people of Korah and their families stay right over there and the earth opened up and they fell into hell they fell right down into hell you know where hell is? the middle of the earth 
Did you ever see them volcanoes spit up? That's hell spitting up. It's right in the middle of the earth. The earth opened up and all of them, Korah, their, their whole families, it said everything that pertaineth to them. It said their furniture, their, they didn't have cars and they had buggies, horse pulled buggies and stuff. Everything of theirs fell down into hell. Watch out. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, tough talk, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. A preacher texted me the other day, I, I was talking about the fires of hell and, and how uh, it's burning in hell, and he says, uh, he says the Bible says it's, it's black in hell. It says right here, the darkness, blackness forever. But like I re respond to him, this is what I think. I said, George, his name is George, a preacher friend of mine. I said, George, I think the darkness is for the people that are in hell. We, we, we can see the fire, but they can't. They just, see, they just burn, but, but it's black. I, I don't understand it, of, of, of why that's like that. But that's what this is here. Reserve the blackness of darkness forever. And then they're burning and screaming and wailing. Never rest, never sleep. No doctor to help them. Nobody to help them. Terrible. Any of you that don't accept Christ, and you remember this preacher saying that someday, and you remember it through eternity. You didn't listen today. God help you. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these. Say, to the old time prophets, they told you the truth. You got to read them in the Bible. The Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. Amen. Woo-hoo! He's going to come riding on a white horse out in front. going to have a two-edged sword sticking out of his mouth. And he's going to slay the multitudes of wicked sinners. And, and, and the blood is going to be up to the bridle of the horse. Way up. You know how a horse is in her chest and her bridle is up here? Going to be blood in, 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 the, in the battle of uh, uh, Megiddo uh, there in, in the Middle East. That's where it's going to happen. To execute judgment upon all and to con convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, verse 16, complainers. Ever hear any of them? Walking after their own lusts and their mouths speak great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration. Respecter of persons. God is no respecter of persons. You shouldn't be either. I shouldn't. Because of advantage, to gain advantage. They respect people. Think they're going to do something for them. But beloved, remember uh, ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Amen who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, they're not saved. But ye, ye, you, but ye beloved, verse 20, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Woo! Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. That's heaven. We don't have to worry about hell. We that have asked Jesus to save us and turn away from our sins and repented. We never have to worry about no hell. We ain't going to worry about no darkness. It's always going to be light. I, I heard of uh, these fake teachers. There's a, there's a, I ain't going to mention his name, but he's a, People buy his books, millions of dollars. People, Christians spend on his books. He's a liar. And 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 he was talking about what he, he ain't got a clue what heaven is. He ain't got a clue. He said the sun and the moon are still going to be there, and they're still going to be here. The Bible says it's going to be diminished. It says we're not going to need no sun because Jesus is the light. That's what the Bible says in Revelation. Jesus is going to be the light. They never going to be dark in heaven. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad I got, you, you, you know what my wife bought me for my birthday? Um, it was really cool. She's going to get one for herself. She's going to get one for my son-in-law, Preacher Scott. It's, it's a light. 
you, you might need, Marquis, you work a lot in that. And, uh, do, do you have to have work sometime, Marquis, when, uh, when you can't hold a flashlight? Yeah. You see, this thing goes around your neck, and it's got uh, two things on it, and you hit the bottom of it, and these lights come on, and where you're, if you're walking, it's going in front of you. You're working on something, it's going in front of you. you turn every, every which way you turn, them lights are there. I love it. I love it. You know, at night, I don't have to turn the light on anymore. I just, I just click that thing on, and I go walk around. I got to get up. But when you get old like I do, you got to get up and go to the bathroom at night. How many old folks had to get up and go to the bathroom at night? <laughs> that happens when you get old. <laughs> well, I just click the light on. And if I got to go outside at night, I don't have to worry about taking it. I just got it right right on me there. And uh, I don't have to, you know, so. But anyway, how'd I get in that? Oh, we ain't going to need no light in heaven. Jesus is going to be the light. Ain't no darkness in heaven. Heaven's going to, I don't know all about it, but heaven's going to be so wonderful. I'm so glad I'm saved. Glory. Uh, it says, It says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Verse 21, verse 22. And if some have compassion, make, you got to be compassionate. You've got to be nice people. I try to help the, uh, the people in the Daytona Beach and Volusia County to be loving and kind towards uh, homeless people. But they don't want to listen to me. They don't want to talk to me. And that, and that's sad. It's that sad that, that most um, political leaders and, 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 and most rich people, they wouldn't give you a nickel for a homeless person. They just want to stomp them out like bugs. It's terrible. They, 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 you know, the, the government and rich people can help homeless people, but they won't. And that's sad. I, I'm trying to help them. They, they, they're making this beautiful park down here on the downtown. Hewitt Brown, he's spending like hundreds of millions of dollars. He's got money unlimited. Yep. He's old, old man. He's building it real fast because he's afraid he's going to die before it gets done. That's, it. That's what he's doing. But I told him, you're going to finish that thing. And, and I says, you're going to have homeless problem down there unless you do the right thing and treat them right. You know what? I got to hold all the leaders that could do something. You know what? I wanted to talk to them about it. Not one of them responded to me. Not one. They're going to have mess on their hands. Right. Yeah. Then when it blows up on them, they'll see. But, 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 but they could plan ahead and, and do the right thing. You know, I'm an old man. i got to sit down a lot. When I take my wife downtown, they told her now they've done a lot of that remodeling and all. Well, she likes to go in an antique shop or something down there. i got to sit in my car. You know why? Ain't no place to sit downtown Daytona. Uh, you know why they've taken all the chairs out? You know why they've taken them out? They don't want homeless people there. What were you going to say, Dad? They put a brand new one down there. Where? Right on B Street. For, 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 you can sit on it? A homeless person can sit on it? They're basically at the bus stop. At, the, well, the bus stop. Yeah, they got a bus thing. But, I mean, how about other chairs? No. No, they ain't got enough. I don't ride the bus. I got a vehicle, so I ain't going to sit at the bus stop. But I want to have a chair like I go to other cities. You know. Uh, they got homeless people in, in St. Augustine, but you don't, you don't see them around and they're trouble because they know how to do it. I just talked with Robert Marbot uh, yesterday, the, the uh, uh, homeless czar for America. He knows all about homeless, a lot more than I know about it. He helped them in, in St. Augustine how to do it, but uh, there's a way to do it right and treat people decently when you ain't going to have a problem with it. They won't listen. Just want to. They want to get rid of them like an epidemic. They want to get rid of homeless like they want to get rid of COVID. Yeah, I'm. I'm telling you. I'm just telling you. I've been ministering to homeless people for 50 years. I know. Glad God loves them. I do. God loves them. Praise God. And some have compassion. You got to have compassion for everybody. Homeless people. Every situation. Compassion for everybody. Homosexuals. No matter what someone does. Got to have compassion. Got to have forgiveness. Oh, God help us. And some have compassion, making the difference. 
You see, loving somebody makes a difference. Compassion makes a difference when you love people. <laughs> I ain't going to talk about it now. I'll talk to Marquis about it. It's a situation that he's aware of with, that I'm involved with, but I'll talk to you about it later. But I try to have compassion with people. I try to love them and do all, but some, they just, you know, it just gets to the point where you can't go no further with them. You just can't. I guess maybe I should, but I just try. And others, verse 23, save with fear, pulling that out of the fire. You know what fire they're talking about here? Yeah, what hell. hell fire. Pull them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh, that sin, that spotted garment. Well, we need it. We need it. We need it. I need it. I, I'm glad I got pulled out of the fire. You glad you got pulled out of the fire? I did. Some of you still in the fire. Some of you go to hell because you won't repent. You love your sin. Oh, God help you. It ain't worth it. Weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, tormented forever and ever. And we close. The benediction, that's a big word. It's just the closing. Verse 24. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling. That's God. Amen? Amen. And to present you faultless. Present me faultless. That means like I ain't got a sin. You know why? Because he paid for all my sins. Got to get your sins paid for before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. You know, the Christian's the only one who got real joy and real peace. Not a bunch of people today getting drunk and having Super Bowl parties and, and all that kind of stuff. And they don't know what fun and joy is. They, they, they have no idea. They, they're looking for joy and what they call entertainment in the wrong places. Glory to God. Verse 25. To the only wise God, our Savior, that's Jesus Christ, Jesus is God, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. You see, Jude starts out real strong about that common salvation. And then it tells you about all this stuff, people up, people going to hell, and then it closes real strong with the love of God, doesn't it? We got to tell about the destruction, but we got to tell about the love. We got to have compassion. We got to love people so they can be saved. Are you saved? I'm saved. I'm so glad I'm saved. Out there in YouTube and Facebook, here in the auditorium. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. That you love us and you're a compassionate God. You're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We're all sinners. We need a Savior. Help us now. Help us. Some people here know there's... I don't know if anybody's saved but me. I know some people here I think are saved. I don't know for sure. They can fool me but can't fool God. We can fool people but you can't fool God. You know in your heart if you're really saved or not, if you've turned from your sins and been sorry for them and trusted in Jesus that he died for you and asked him to save you and he'd be your savior God dying for you would you do it today if you, you don't know for sure this is the prayer let's just pray it with me this is the prayer dear Lord Jesus I know I'm a sinner I can't get away from that like we all are I need my sins forgiven I believe you died on the cross and shed your blood. I believe you rose from the grave on the third day. I turn from my sins today. Yes, I do. And I trust in you, Jesus Christ, to be my Savior. And my only hope that I can go to heaven. Because you shed your blood for me and rose again. And I confess my sin and I turn from it today. Thank you for saving me right now. Amen.